Every morning has a new beginning, a new blessing, a new hope and a new learning. A pleasant morning to everyone gathered here. Let this new inception bring a smile to your face and happiness to your day. Adding more value to your day, we are here with webinar session on entrepreneurship, a journey, not a destination. A teacher is the one who brings the best in the student, who changes lives with just the right mix of chakra challenges, whose noble profession shapes the character, caliber and future of an individual. Now, I call upon Mr. Sampath Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of CSE, to deliver welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mariam. Hope my voice is audible. Yes, you are audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Good afternoon to each one of you present today. I would like to thank everyone for joining this webinar organized by the Department of Computer Science and Engineering and Entrepreneurship Development Cell through Institution Innovation Cell of our institution. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to my part takers, Mr. Saravanan and Ms. Sonia Parginman to help us make this event come together to become a success. Thank you both of you. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome our Honorable Chairman, Mr. Mohan Ram Sir, Principal, Dr. Sudhar Mohan Ram Ma'am, Director, Mr. Raja Ram Sir, and respected Chief Guest, Mr. Rakesh Menon, our HOD Ma'am, Dr. Shubha, and research team, Dr. Karapu Sami sir. Welcome you all. The topic of discussion for today's webinar is entrepreneurship, a journey, not a destination. Entrepreneurship is neither a title that needs to be achieved, nor it is a destination to arrive. It's merely a journey that has no proper ending to, to it. The successful entrepreneurs of this world do not have a finish line they need to cross. With all these words, I am I'm extremely delighted to pronounce the speaker for, for the day, Mr. Rakesh Menon, founder and CEO, Mantle Training and Consulting. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting our, inst our invitation to deliver your valuable speech for the webinar. I also welcome all the faculty members, students and partakers who have joined us today. I guarantee that the webinar will be productive and one of you precious time. Dear students, post all your queries related to this session in chat box. Thank you. Over to MOC. Thank you, sir. It is my privilege to welcome Dr. Shubha, Professor and Head, Department of Computer Science and Engineering to address the gathering. Over to you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So good morning all, uh, actually good afternoon students. So we are happy to uh, see a very good number of participants today. And uh, you may be wondering uh, why are we organizing a session on entrepreneurship? Because as you know, we have been organizing so many webinars and uh, sessions on different technological domains, various technologies and uh, uh, various core related areas. And for you second years, this is the first time we are organizing a session on entrepreneurship and you may have the question in your mind, why a session on entrepreneurship for us computer science students? I will tell you the reason. So normally when we interact with the students when they join the college, normally we used to ask them uh, their aspirations and most of the time, nearly 80 to 85 percentage of the students, they tell uh, I want to join a product company, I want to join a service company. So getting a job is my aspiration. And rest of the students, they give higher studies as their aspiration. And very rarely, we see one or two students giving entrepreneurship to become an entrepreneur as their aspiration. And even uh, in the past history of our department of nearly 13 years, we could see only some three to four entrepreneurs who came out of our department and who chose, entre uh, cho who chose to become an entrepreneur. But we have to understand that this is uh, one thing 
and uh, which we can we have to always have it as a career aspiration uh, because normally we have a tendency to become job seekers but don't have a tendency to become a job seeker be a job giver so that is the basic idea of entrepreneurship and we want most uh, a good number of our students turning into entrepreneurs and you all know we have a startup accelerator in our campus uh, which is used by few of the entrepreneurs of the campus and if you see most of the time it is being vacant and only various other activities happen in that uh, startup accelerator we want you all to effectively effectively utilize the uh, startup accelerator and come up as entrepreneurs in life so as we all know engineers are the architects of modern india and as computer science engineers we have lot of opportunities to take up entrepreneur i mean to take up entrepreneurship uh, and uh, if you see now currently uh, we all know disruptive technologies are ruling the world uh, i think you all know what is a disruptive technology so it is an innovation which totally revolutionizes the business and which totally Uh, completely changes the idea about business so ola is one uh, disruptive technology which totally revolutionizes the uh, traditional uh, cab facility swiggy is one disruptive technology there are so many other disruptive technologies we have right and for uh, being a computer science and engineer you have a lot of scope to uh, to have a st- to start a startup and uh, you can give job opportunities for many people because that much scope is that much potential is available with the computer science field so with this objective in mind we are initiating a series on entrepreneurship and today we are having we are very happy to start the first program of the series and this program is going to be conducted by uh, mr rakesh menon he is a very good friend of mine and he is also a well wisher of our institution he has visited our institution so many times and conducted so many sessions for our students so Uh, from on my behalf i extend a very warm welcome to our uh, resource person mr rakesh menon and i um, we are looking forward to your inspiring session over to moc thank you ma'am communication is the real work of leadership leaders instill in their people a hope of success and a belief in themselves Positive leaders empower people to accomplish their goals. It's my honor, more than a pleasure, to welcome our speaker, Mr. Rakesh Menon, founder and CEO, Mantle Training and Consulting, Coimbatore. I call upon Mr. Saravanan, Assistant Professor, Department of CSE, to introduce the speaker. It's my great privilege to introduce about our chief guest as well as speaker of this webinar. Mr. Rakesh Menon. He is a mechanical engineer with an MBA graduate in the specialization of marketing, and also he got a master's in psychology. His work experience is spread out in areas such as engineering, marketing, management, and training. He is also part of few professional bodies, named as a chapter director of Fab Events and Business Forum. Bantu Chapter and State Director of Fabians Global. He is also a member of uh, Yes Young Entrepreneur School, Bantu Chapter and Past Core Committee member. He is also a member of EPC Expo Promotion Center, Bantu Chapter and also an active Toastmaster since 2013 and achieved the Distinguished Toastmaster status, which is highest individual recognition in. Toastmaster. He is a past president of Panto Toastmasters Club and past area director for clubs in Panto and uh, District 82. He is also mentor a lot of Toastmasters to achieve excellence. He has won various contests in humor speech and speech evaluation in Toastmasters. He is the founder of Mantle Training Consulting and CEO, uh, a company that focuses on imparting skills for students, professionals, entrepreneurs, etc. In the areas of soft skill training, sales training, professional skill development, employability skill development, 
and consulting service for companies and startups. He is not only an educationist but also a humanitarian. He is a receiver of Good Samaritan Award in December 2020 from First Heart Foundation for the humanitarian works he has done. He has donated that 51 times so far at four countries. He is passionate about performing arts, done some works in small and big screens and been a part of few movies in Tamil and Malayalam. He is a sport enthusiast and plays cricket and badminton actively. Also, he loves cycling and swimming. And it's my great privilege to uh, present this, uh, introduce about the speaker and I'm very glad to that and over to you, MOC. Thank you, sir. Now I request Mr. Rakesh Mayan, sir, to take over the session. Thank you so much. This is mandatory to ask this question whenever we come on air. Am I audible? Can somebody acknowledge? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure to meet students of Isha College of Engineering. Every time that I have walked into that campus, I have personally feel a lot of motivated, be it for any professional work or be it for a Toastmasters meeting or for a session or a seminar or for any uh, other college event, that campus has given me a lot of positivity because the, the owners, the founders of the institution are great visionaries who had set up a fantastic infrastructure in place. Man was talking about few incubators that is there in the college which focuses on developing entrepreneurship among students. It is a fantastic initiative. I am recalling my days when I was a student. In my entire college life, all we had was just one event which was focusing on entrepreneurship development. Other than that, I don't I don't think we had any other event. And cross-learning where we go to other colleges and participate and all was quite rare at that time. So to set the context straight, I'm really glad that you are studying at a college where the management want to impart these skills for you at such an early age. A man was telling me that most of the students are from second year and few other students from third and final year who finish their exams might be joining in. Something that I am quite amazed is the number of participants here. Never ever have I addressed students in person more than around 200 and online more than around 100. But I am quite shocked seeing the number because it is now at 538. It has been fluctuating. Okay, so I'm glad that I could connect with so many participants and share my knowledge. What is it that I learned during my professional journey? And what, what is it that drove me to start a journey of entrepreneurship? So a lot of experiences I'll be sharing. This is this one way of uh, sharing is something which I'm not used to much. I always ask the participants to unmute, talk and keep their videos on so that we can have an interactive session, but it's okay. We, we know this particular uh, platform, Webinar Jam, has got a lot of advantages. So, if there is anything specific, you can keep your questions coming in chat. I would like to answer your questions towards the end of the session. I would just like to start a presentation. Because with visuals, I believe there are a lot of things that can be conveyed better. I was talking to Mr. Saravanan and uh, we were discussing about the topic. He told entrepreneurship can you talk about it and I told okay you can just add something to it a journey not a destination because a lot of people think they want to start a company they start the company and they feel things will just progress automatically or it's a great journey that they're going to have but it is not definitely not a destination it is just a starting point it is a continuous journey where enormous amount of focus innovation passion has to be there to drive the organization because these days a lot of startups we see coming and going. Maybe they don't even touch that one year of existence. If your company is successfully running for three years, it is a great achievement. So definitely we should not be laid back that okay, we started a company and the things will be automatically functioning. We should not be laid back like that. It is a non-stop journey. Every day there will be new things 
there'll be challenges, there'll be achievements, there'll be accomplishments. So it's a journey that you should always be cherishing. So let me move on with this slide. This is me. On the left side, you see a photo. Can somebody respond in chat roughly which year this could have been taken? The photograph on the left. Can some of you respond in chat? I know there are 437 participants here. The photo on the left, which year do you think that would have been taken? Roughly. 10 years before? No, more than that. Thank you, Akil, for responding and making me know that chat is working. 15, 2015, 24 years old. <laughs> okay, I don't want you to get into my age. Roughly which year? 2008. Okay. I'll tell you, this was roughly around 2000. Okay, so 21 years before. Okay, 2000 this was taken. At that time, I had started working and I was into my six years of my professional life. I was just comfortable, happy working for a company and all I was looking at working, working, working and at some point of time when I am when I feel enough is enough, retire. I never had even a thought about entrepreneurship and even going forward that is there was not much of thought. When that happened, I will be sharing it in my story. The photo on the right which you see that was actually taken during one Toastmasters event at one other college here. So that is taken two years back, okay? So it has been a great journey from the left side photo to the one on the right. This is one of my old photograph which I try to pick it from my uh, backup. I myself find it sometimes difficult to identify me in my old photo. That is why I have highlighted. I was a boy, quite happy. You know, if you see the expression of a lot of others, they are all quite conscious. But I, I feel nice when I look at this photo because I, I, I don't have any tension, no worries. I'm happily, most of my childhood photos are like that. But happily I'm uh, smiling there. This was taken in my second standard. Uh, the, the good thing is I'm still in touch with few people, like at least around 20 people in this photograph. You know, who are all, we are all connected through the WhatsApp group. Something which I'm glad about. These are few brands that I worked with. I think there is some audio that has gone into our session. Can somebody uh, check it and unmute? Sorry, mute that. Okay. I want to talk to you regarding few brands that I worked with, few prestigious brands, India and abroad. The first company that I worked with on the top left corner, Batley Boy. This is a company that gave me a great foundation. I worked in this company for about five years. Initially, in, in maybe around five, six years of my career, whichever company that I worked for, I was the youngest there because I started working at 18 when I finished my diploma in mechanical. So at this company in Batley Boy, a lot of people were there in their uh, mid 20s, 30s, 40s. There were people even in their late 50s who were on the verge of retiring. So every now and then we used to have some farewell function for somebody who's retiring. So this is a company which is around 140 years old, started in the 19th century and still thriving good. In Coimbatore we have a branch, this is a company which has branches across India and does projects across the globe. So I started my career at Batley Boy, I was a design engineer there. It was a fantastic foundation that I had. The kind of guidance and support I got from my peers, from my managers into the core designing. You know, I was in the textile air conditioning department. So a lot of exposure I got because at 18 when I started working, I, I could hardly speak to somebody whom I don't know because in my school days and my college days, I was a total introvert. I don't remember even a single incident of going and stop talking on stage. There was one incident in college when I went and I messed it up, but that is not something worth recalling. So the, when I started working, I was a total introvert. I didn't know how to talk to people, but what gave me that foundation into my skill development? I will come to that slide later. The colleagues at Batley Boy were very accommodative. They were very friendly. And the five years in, in Batley Boy gave me a great foundation. And after that, see, basically I'm from Kerala. A lot of friends whom you know for Keralites, 
the future is in the Middle East. There will not be a single family or home where somebody or the other is not working in Middle East. Maybe Dubai, Qatar, Saudi, yeah, Oman and all these places. So like that, my brother was already in the Middle East. He took a visa for me and got me a job there. And I traveled to the Middle East, Dubai, in the year 1999 and took up a job at a MNC, a company called Drake and Skull. I know the pronunciation is quite strange. I started working with Drake and Skull as a design engineer. It was a British company and uh, we were doing projects in the complete electrical and mechanical side. The kind of projects that we used to do are maybe 30-40 uh, story buildings, amusement parks, huge shopping malls and things like that. Even 5 star, 7 star hotels. So <laughs> the kind of, sorry, the kind of exposure I got at Dragon Skull after I went from Batley Boy was something mind blowing. We had nationalities from around 10-12 countries, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladeshis and Middle East if you take from uh, Ye uh, Yemen, from uh, Palestine, from uh, Lebanon, lot of other Middle East countries, from Africa, from Egypt, from Sudan and if you take the Far East, there were, I had colleagues from Philippines, from Indonesia, from Malaysia and Europe. We had, I had colleagues who were from, uh, who were British, who were Spanish, who were Swedish and also a few Americans. So it's a totally mixed culture. Going abroad, working in a MNC with such diversified community, it was a great ex experience for me. I was learning enormously. My skills were growing in all directions, my engineering skills, my technical skills, my people skills, my managerial skills, everything was developing. Uh, admin, can you please mute? I think there is somebody whose mic is unmuted. It's quite disturbing. Thank you. Yeah, the kind of exposure that I got at Dragon Skull was something mind-blowing. Very soon I started uh, executing projects. The kind of interaction that I used to have with the consultants, with the main contractors, with our vendors, you know, all these things gave me an enormous amount of exposure. But initial 10 years of my career, I was fully into engineering projects and things like that. But somewhere I felt I have a great flair for marketing. I was looking for an opportunity to get into marketing even during the later phase of my stint at Reckon Skull, but company was not accommodative. So after about 10 years, I came back to India and I started work with a company called iDenison. Okay, it's a Bangalore based company which was focusing on developing campus automation softwares for engineering colleges. The company was quite established in Bangalore. They were working with VTU, like how we have Anna University here. VTU is Visheshwara Technical uh, University in Karnataka. So this company was, was already with working with VTU and few prestigious colleges in Karnataka. So they started new in Tamil Nadu, they were hiring sales professionals. So ignoring my 10 years of work in projects, I started at this company as a fresher. Fresher because marketing was new to me. They told Rakesh, we agree that you have 10 years of experience, but for this profile, we can only consider you as a fresher. I thought, fine, I am ready to take that risk because I felt marketing is something where I belong. But definitely, my previous experience was so useful for me because whenever some, you know, while interacting, the exposure that I had got while working with Batley Boy and Trek and Skull was very useful for me while I was working for Idenism. Though the profile was sales and marketing, the exposure that I got was a rewarding experience. I know how to talk to people better, how to give presentations, how to, you know, run the show, how to manage a team and things like that. I was quite com com comfortable. So Idenison gave me a great platform to showcase my skills in marketing. In three months time, you know, normally how we go about it is we go to a college, we try to meet the, the either the computer science engineer or the principal and try to fix a demo. Telling this product is, uh, is, is so seamless that it eliminates a lot of pain areas in your college functionality and we try to schedule a demo. For the demo, the technical specialist used to come from Bangalore. So I used to come, I had to go early morning, pick him from the uh, station or bus stand, put him in the hotel, come back to my home, then get refreshed, go back to the hotel, pick him. We would go to the college, finish the demo, evening I had to be with them. 
pack him off to Bangalore. So all these things were going on for the first three years, sorry, three months. But very soon, I pick, picked up whatever it needs to give technical presentations to college. And after three months, I told him, sir, enough, I can manage the presentation. And I started delivering these sessions. Smart Campus was the identity that we had later for Idenison because initially the product was named as Smart Campus because it makes the campus smart. Later, we renamed the company itself as Smart Campus because we didn't want to have confusion in the mind of the customers. Idenison, Smart Campus, we wanted to have one identity. So that was how the Smart Campus was uh, started. And in about two years' time, I had visited at least around 200 colleges in Tamil Nadu. And I closed a good amount of deals. I used to go schedule the demo, go give the presentation. And for finalization, probably I used to ask the country head to come so that we can close the deal and get the implementation started. So it was a great journey in marketing that I truly love. And after working for about two years, the company, uh, they had some challenges in the products. So that was when I got an opportunity again in the Middle East to work with a company called Almara Networks. This was in Qatar, a company that I started working uh, when, uh, in 2006, if a uh, few of you remember, we had the Asian Games in Qatar. So I, I was there at that time. It was a fantastic experience. That is a continuation to my marketing stint. I was working in Almara for a comp uh, you know, in, in a domain where we were focusing on uh, executing projects in the low current systems. A lot of electrical uh, products like uh, services like public address, uh, networking for the uh, IT infrastructure, the BMS uh, system, the fire alarm system, and all these things we used to deploy. So I was with Almany Networks for close to around five years, and uh, Qatar as a country was booming like anything. A company, a country with uh, very high GDP with a lot of natural resources. I got a great exposure at Qatar and working with Almana. After a few years, it was always a dream for me to work in the oil and gas industry because I had few of my friends in Qatar who had this one month work, one month break, one month work, one month break because they used to work in offshore. So I was wondering how I wish I get a company like that where I can also try to, you know, have this kind of a schedule, but I didn't get immediately at that time. After uh, Almana, what happened is 2007-8, that was a time when India was booming in the IT segment at that time. I know uh, the students here would have been in school, early school at that time, but India, uh, Shubhana would know, was booming in the IT segment at that time. A lot of IT parks coming up, even the KG ASL in Sarvambati, uh, also the India land uh, in Kirnatham, the SEG and all came up at during that time. You know, IT was booming in any city you see, like cities like Chennai, Bangalore, Pune, Hyderabad, Mumbai, and a lot of cities were booming with IT parks and things like that. Uh, so that was when I got an opportunity to work with a company called NCI India. It was a Noida based company. It was one of the top three companies in India that was doing projects in networking. You know, in the uh, when you plug your network cable to your laptop or desktop or whatever it is. I'll just share how this connectivity happens. BSNL or whichever service provider would have put the main cable at a junction box outside our home or office or wherever it is. From there, the cable has to reach your home. So in a home, it is a, you know, they just take it in some route and put it across. But if you take it in huge IT parks, there also it is, this is how it is. BSNL, let's talk about BSNL. You know, they would be bringing the connection to a junction box there. So if it is an uh, IT park which runs into uh, around 10, 12 floors, you know, it will just reach a main junction board in the ground floor. From there, there's a, you know, uh, there's a channel through which it is taken to each floor and the, all these cables are distributed and it reaches the floor. In the floor, you have separate junction boxes, panel board and things like that. The IT cabling is done and you just have this patch cord coming to your disk. You plug that patch cord to your laptop or desktop, the power is on. The, your system is connected to the internet. So we do the complete end-to-end -end cabling solution. That was again a continuation of what I was doing at Almana Networks because we were a net, primarily a network cabling company in Qatar. And NCA India was again in the same domain.
So I got an opportunity to work with one of the top three networking companies in India and where I got a great exposure. Now I used to have meetings with almost all the top IT companies in India like uh, IBM, uh, Tech Mahindra, Infosys, Cognizant, you know, all of these companies were our clients. So I used to either they used to come to our office, we used to go to their office. So complete infrastructure was done by us. You know, in, even in Chennai during that time, the Sri Pramudu Road and uh, even uh, Ambatur, that side and all, a lot of IT parks were coming up. So that was a fantastic exposure again that I got. Somehow or the other, I used to keep getting opportunities from Middle East every now and then. So, you know, NCA India, uh, it was a very good stint that I had. But again, you know, later during that time, there was something called as recession. That time, you know, recession was a new world because uh, it, I, I know that it had come in the last century also, but it was not all that popular. In 2009, somewhere at that time, again, recession came. So company wanted to downsize people. They asked me to relocate to Noida. They didn't want to have somebody in my position. I was the RSM at that time, regional sales manager. So company didn't want to have somebody in that level at uh, Chennai, you know. So they wanted me to come to Noida. But I was, you know, uh, being in the south, I was not familiar with Hindi, which still I am not. And uh, uh, instead of relocating, going to Noida, I thought, I, I, let me take up some abroad opportunity. That was when I got an opportunity to work in a company called Petro M Med. It is a company based at Yemen. I went to Yemen in 2009 and uh, this was a new company set up. So which used to do projects in the oil and gas industry. So I was taking care of the complete marketing, the project activity, uh, not project, handing over once we pick up an order, until we hand it over to the uh, technical execution team, I used to handle. So uh, tender, proposals, all the bidding of projects, everything I used to take care. Then two years in Yemen was a fantastic time. I went there in 2009 and I was there till 2011. Uh, if things were peaceful there, probably I would have still continued because it was such a fantastic country. Uh, we didn't have things like fan and AC like that. Okay, because it was a high altitude company, uh, country, uh, sorry, city. The city was Sana. It was a high altitude city where uh, it was as high as Uti, 1700 uh, feet above sea level. So it was so cool. Entire uh, you know, seasons are very cool and uh, we don't even have fan and, fan and ACs. It was such a fantastic time that we had. Uh, I had a good circle of friends. The locals were very friendly, unlike few other Middle East countries that I worked. And uh, I had a fantastic time. 2011, due to the problems in that country, which is still going on, it's like a war kind of situation, which is uh, similar to what is going on at Syria and few other places there, Libya and all. So I had to pack up and come back. And uh, I started with a company called Keymine Learning. I don't want you guys to get confused. Why is this guy, you know, working in, you know, jumping jobs every now and then? I'll, I'll come to that. Okay. From Petro Yamed, I came back to India in 2011. And... Uh, I attended one training program which gave me a phenomenal amount of uh, realization into which direction I want to take my life into. Okay, So that is when I realized that you know I want to take up my journey, my professional journey in training and development. I came across a company called Keymind which was less than a year old. Keymind is a company which was focusing on imparting uh, employability skills for students. We have done a lot of empowerment programs for students at colleges across uh, South India. So I started my uh, stint at Keymind where I was taking care of the complete sales and marketing activities. So though the company was into training and development, I wasn't into much of training because I was taking care of sales. I just, All I used to do is go give some talks for the uh, students and uh, give some motivation, not much of the uh, training part. So Keymind, we worked with about uh, around 100 plus colleges in South India in, in three years time. So company was cruising, taking up to a great level. And after about five years, when the placement scenario and things like that was, again, you know, that was a time when the bulk hiring companies, companies like Infosys, TCS, Wipro, Cognizant and all, you know, the, the hiring slightly reduced somewhere 2014, 15 during that time. So the trend for training was again changing. 
companies which used to outsource the training to companies like us started going for in-house uh, setup. They used to have a you know soft skill aptitude uh, trainers within the campus, and they used to manage with an in-house team. So outsourcing was kind of stopped. So that was when our CEO and me we had a clear discussion. We we wanted to decide okay how was it that we would take our company further. We got a team of uh, uh, you know senior staff who wanted to continue the show. And uh, as usual, I got an opportunity in in uh, Abu Dhabi this time. In a company called Technip, and my CEO, he got a good opportunity in a startup in Bangalore. So both of us went in different directions. Keybind was still there existing. So the, my dream job that I told when I was working in Albana, I used to have a lot of friends. Used to have this one month work, one month break, this kind of a schedule. So at Technip, what happened? I got an opportunity to work in an offshore project. Okay, so I was having this schedule where four weeks I work and four weeks I have a break, and I get paid for the entire. Uh, entire time, every month on first, my salary used to be credited. But my work used to be four weeks work, four week break. So I was managing the, our projects in four different islands in Abu Dhabi in offshore. So it was a fantastic stint that I got. So two years I was with Technem. Okay, after two years, again the oil price was crumbling like anything. It came to somewhere around twenty-seven US dollars per barrel. It used to be. Even hundred plus dollars few years before that, but came down, came down, came down, and uh, don't ask me why is why the why the petrol price didn't come down at that time because uh, there is some uh, calculation based on which the petrol price is decided. But the oil price, the, the global oil price, uh, crumbled, and the company uh, some of the major scope of work that we had in offshore had to be uh, called off or put on hold. And after two years, I was demobilized from site and I came back to India. After coming back to India, it was a continuation of my journey at Keymind. I started executing the training projects that Keymind used to pick up, without being full time engaged to them. And I also started a lot of freelancing. That was when I got opportunity to work with some consultants in Bangalore, Chennai. I did some trainer training programs and got certified in uh, delivering sessions for Accenture and also a few said big sessions, business English communication by Cambridge. I got certified in all these things. So I used to be engaged as a freelancer for some top-notch customers in India, and uh, parallelly I used to deliver my training programs for Keymind. And uh, gradually I started doing some consulting assignments. Company that wanted me to support them in some specific area could be marketing, or could be training and development, or could be you know some operational uh, challenges that they have. So they started engaging me for some operational. Uh, Or whichever specific area they have challenge in, so I started taking consulting assignments. And after doing all these things, I had a great, great passion to start up my own training company. But that appropriate time didn't come, and uh, appropriate people also. Uh, you know, it, I cannot just. I didn't want to have it as a one-man show. I was also looking for starting a training company with the right team, with the right people. And thanks to few people who I came across in my life. I got the right connect that gave me a confidence to go ahead and start my venture, which is Mantle Training and Consulting. Mantle is still a baby, which is just four months old, still crawling. Okay, but when we started Mantle, we had a complete clarity: why Mantle? What is Mantle going to do? And how are we going to deliver our programs? So we had clarity in this. We are four partners. And uh, the three other people, all of them are uh, you now having great credentials in the training and development industry. One person, she was operations head with NIIT and NIS. NIS was a institute started by NIIT, which was National Institute of Sales. That was there during the 90s and early 2000s. Okay, and later she was with Aviva uh, Life Insurance as national training head. Somebody with strong credentials. Uh, this is one of my partner. My second partner is a person who has who is a financial management consultant. He is a past president of our Toastmasters Club, Comrade Toastmasters Club. Somebody whom I know for about six years now, and uh, he is an ex-banker. My weakest area is finance. So this gentleman he is good in finance. So I thought he is a person who can really get take care of that domain. And uh, my third partner is a person who has got three decades of experience in the pharma industry. is a great marketing professional he's got his own company in the pharma line 
He used to work with me as a freelancer when we were delivering projects from Kiwain. And uh, he is also a member of our Toastmasters club. So we four came together and started this company, Mantel. We are delivering projects for companies within India, abroad, because presently with the online uh, scenario that is going on, we don't necessarily have a geographical boundary. So anybody from anywhere, you know, we can deliver training programs. All we need is the right connect and a contract to get things started. So that was how Mantel was born. It was my dream, you know. I was not lucky like you guys to get this spark for entrepreneurship at an early stage in my career. So consider each one of you lucky that, you know, the college is doing this kind of thing. As ma'am rightly told, if you want to become an employee, you'll be just earning for yourself and your family. But if you're an entrepreneur, you are, you know, you are creating jobs for other people. So, you know, can that, can it be a, a what, something more noble? Okay, there are families which are, dip, which are depending on your company, you know, you are definitely giving livelihood to, to a lot of people. And another thing is, there are enormous amount of problems that need solutions, that need innovative solutions, practical solutions. That is how the startup culture has been evolving in our country in the last few years. And thanks to our government, a lot of startup initiatives are there. There is enormous amount of funding that is in place and uh, things are much, much easier. If I want to start a company, look for some funding 10 years back, things would have been very difficult. But right now, there is an enormous amount of channels that is there from which you can get great funding and get started with your own company. You get complete hand-holding support. Okay, for the first five years, you don't have to pay tax. It is not just to escape tax, but these are the provisions that you are getting from the government. There are a lot of privileges that you get. So presently, if you want to start up entrepreneurship, it is the best time, okay? And still, as I told you earlier, watch out for the problems of the common man. Ma'am was talking about Ola. Transportation was a, a big pain for a lot of people. You know how the auto drivers used to fleece the customers? For a two kilometer distance, they used to charge 50, 80 bucks. You know, when Ola came, how seamless the, the common man's transport became. Even you go to a new city, Chennai, Bangalore, Cochin or anywhere, all you need to do is just connect to the app, find out the nearest vehicle, connect, book the cab, travel at a nominal cost. That too very luxurious cab. Okay, you don't have to maintain your own vehicle or you don't have to you know, be uh, bothered about these uh, cab drivers who charge more. It has solved enormous problems of a common man. So like that, Oyo Rooms. Oyo Rooms is one of the company that started in India and created waves in the uh, accommodation industry. Okay, or uh, what? What can I say? Uh, in the hotel industry, it is somewhat a copy of Airbnb, which is a global company. Like how you see, Ola is a copy of Uber, which is again a global company. But there are a lot of things that Ola, as a company, has innovated and brought out. There are a lot of Indian features that they have integrated with. Or so that the customers are quite happy, satisfied. Okay, so our, like uh, how Ola has flourished. Uh, Oyo Rooms is another company that has made hotel stay so economical without compromising on the quality for for professionals or you know for people who get to travel a lot. Oyo Rooms has been a fantastic boom. It saves cost. It gives you luxury. It gives you uh, status. It gives you fantastic ambience. Okay. So there are still a lot of problems that want practical solutions, economical solutions, innovative solutions. So keep looking out. Every now and then we see new companies coming up. The, the solution that they provide has been enormous. Even presently during the COVID times, there are companies which came out with some fantastic innovations. These were not startups, but companies that were already existing. I want to talk about this story. Mahindra, Mahindra Group, they started making ventilators. Now, during the first wave, if you all recall, the ventilators were, was having acute shortage. A company, Mahindra Group, which is known for automobile, IT space and all, they got into this space and started manufacturing ventilators in a very short time. They did the R&D and the affordability. The ventilators were available for about 7,500. Okay? And the high-end ones for hospitals to be used in ICUs were available for a few lakhs. So they got into innovation, they got a right team and everything and they 
came out with that. So there are a lot of startups, even in Corbeto, there are a few good startup communities which is doing enormous amount of work in, mush in mushrooming uh, people who have got some right uh, ideas, how they can make this idea to a solution, to a product, to a service and how they can roll out the company. So keep looking out. Definitely, I am sure all your entrepreneurial dreams can become a reality because the ecosystem is something which, which is facilitating for all these things to happen. Okay, I have told enough about Mantle. If there is anything specific you would like to know, I would hear from you later. Okay, I told you about how I started my professional journey. From college, when I started working, I was a total introvert where in my school and college, I hardly have a memory of going to the stage and speaking. I was not comfortable in talking to strangers. Anybody knew in my circle, I would just be silent. I wouldn't even utter a word. Okay, so from there, how I became a, a decent communicator. The first exposure that I got was in Road Track Club. At 19 years, I start. I started my journey in uh, a, a club in Coimbatore which is called Post, uh, Rotary Club of Coimbatore Symphony. That club was into the second year. Mr. Santosh, he was the president at that time. Uh, this club gave me a totally different exposure. My three three or four years in Rotary defined or you know gave me an opportunity to, to develop enormous amount of skills. Communication skills, decision making skills, public speaking skills and what not. Anything that I felt is required to become a good professional, everything I got in Rotary Club. And there were few records that you know, I, I, I could manage to get. The first year in my Rotary Club, I was the best new member. The second year, I got into a, a that is, there is a leadership team. I don't remember, you know. Okay, in those process it is uh, executive committee. There is similarly there is a you know, team that you call a leadership team in Rotary. In Rot right. I became the professional service director. The role of the professional service director is to go meet, connect with good public speakers, good trainers, good facilitators and fix them for our weekly meetings. So I used to meet a lot of good trainers, good JC faculties who were trainers and a few people who were running their own training companies, try to call you know, the landline phones, a, a period which you, you all uh, the students would not even be able to think of. I used to call their offices, try to get an appointment, go meet them in person, talk about our club and why we want him to come address on what topics. I used to get all these things scheduled. That one year gave me an opportunity to meet with a lot of trainers. Okay, so gradually somewhere my passion towards training and development started there, but I, I didn't realize it at that time. And that second year in Rotaract, I was the best, uh, uh, best member of the leadership team. Okay. And the next year, the third year in my Rotary Club, we scheduled one meeting where the current president, okay, wanted me to, uh, we four or five people from the leadership team, get two people agree as taking up the role of president and secretary. These both guys, I don't know if they smelled it or what, they vanished. They never attended this meeting. Okay, we are just trying to call them by landline and uh, their uh, mother told uh, they are not at home, they have gone out somewhere, we don't know when they will come. And these guys who wanted to get our support to make the other two guys as president secretary, made me, convinced me and my neighbor, you know, like uh, to take up the position of president and secretary. With a lot of reluctance, eventually somehow I thought, okay, let me take it and I took, took that up. Trust me friends, this one year of being the president of my Rotary Club was a game changing experience for me. I used to address the gathering for each meeting. Okay, sometimes there are Rotarians, sometimes only Rotary, sometimes there are common people that are guests. But the kind of exposure that I got in that one year being the president was, was an experience that I will cherish for my entire life. My public speaking skills grew. My decision making skills grew and my you know, coordination skills, event manage, managing skills, we used to conduct a lot of events. So I used to be in charge of the planning, execution and everything. It was a fantastic exposure that I got. In that year, in particular, our club got a lot of awards in the district awards uh, festival. It was a mind-blowing 
experience that I got in Rotor Act. And after that, by default, there is something called as immediate past president. So I am just trying to support the club to ensure we are flourishing, we are thriving and we are performing good. So again, it is just a continuation of my leadership role. But those, those four years in Rotor Act gave me all the skills that is required for you to really, really excel in your professional life or in, in any aspect of your life. And after that, when I came back from Yemen in 2011, okay, I got a chance to attend a training program under a banner called Landmark Education, Landmark Worldwide, like how it is called now. Landmark is a training which I underwent at uh, Chennai and Bangalore in a span of six months time. You know, there are four levels of training. So they called it, they call it the curriculum for living. You know, there is a basic course that I do, then an advanced course, then a 10 seminar, you know, it is a seminar series which spreads across 10 seminars that I attend. And there is something called as a SCLP, Self-Expression and Leadership Program. So this was spread out across, I think, six to eight months. So I used to travel every weekend to Chennai or Bangalore to be a part of this program. But it is my participation in Landmark that gave me the clarity that I should take my career forward in the training and development industry. There were some breakthroughs that happened in my life that gave me this clarity. It was a session in Bangalore in Sophia School where around 750 participants were there. With the kind of spark that I got, there, there, there are times that you know you are given to go out, take the mic and announce whatever you want. Breakthroughs as we call it. I went to the mic and I I announced in front of 750 audience. I am Rakesh, I am coming from number 2. The biggest breakthrough that I got by attending in this is that I want to take my career in the training and development industry and I am going to do that. I announced in front of 750 people which gave me that enormous amount of confidence to go all out and make that happen. This breakthrough is what got me a job at KeyMind. Okay, KeyMind is the last one, last the bottom right corner, you know. That breakthrough that I got by participating in Landmark gave me an opportunity or gave me that spark to go for a training company. And as I told you earlier, KeyMind was a company that started just less than a year old. We had a very, you know, uh, a very enterprising guy uh, who was the CEO who was around 11 years younger than me, you know. But that age factor was not at all a botheration for us to work together and create whatever we wanted. So I got into KeyMind. I, I was working for a training company, but I was not a trainer. Later, I, I, I did have this hidden agenda of becoming a trainer. Somehow, I didn't get that opportunity, the right skills to become a trainer. It was then, my CEO introduced me to the wonderful platform Toastmasters. He asked me to come for a meeting at PNC Institute of Management. Uh, to attend a Toastmasters meeting of Comrade Toastmasters Club. We used to meet every Saturday evening at PSC Institute of Management. I went there without knowing what Toastmasters is and attended this meeting. Anybody here who has attended Toastmasters meeting would understand you know, that atmosphere. I just went there, a lot of people coming and giving prepared speeches. There was a grammarian giving feedback on the grammar part. There was an R counter who was counting the R, um, uh, you know, so, but the repeated words and the repeated sounds that you make and giving his report. There was somebody who was giving an evaluation of the speech. There was somebody, a table topic master, giving topics at random, uh, picking up people uh, and give, asking them to talk for about two minutes. So this was a new experience for me. I felt if I have to become a trainer, I need to make some realistic effort without which I cannot become. So I felt those sponsors could give me this edge. All I wanted to is excel in my public speaking skills and essentially skills that, that I would need to become a trainer. I joined Toastmasters, I was mapped with a mentor who was a senior person in Toastmasters and I started giving speeches, projects, I started competing in contests, uh, win or lose, but that excitement was great. Okay, first three years in Toastmasters, I was just a member. There were opportunities to get into the XCOM, like uh, President, Vice President, Secretary, Treasurer, Sergeant, there are various roles to be taken. But since my job at KeyMind had a lot of traveling, I thought if I take up a role, I need to do justice. So let me just wait. I will take up if they have the time. So after that, 
when i approve when i felt the time is appropriate i can go ahead and take a leadership role that is when i went and took up the role called vice president membership this role where i got to perform as a vice president membership gave me a, a great amount of you know uh, networking skills which otherwise i was slightly lacking okay because i need to talk to guests interact with guests brings them about those masters how it can help them clear clarify all their doubts and walk them through the membership process and enroll them as members so like that i got a very good insight into the leadership space of those masters and the next year i was a treasurer and while attending a those masters con district conference in sri lanka while listening to a speech of of the international president those masters international president who is from australia mr mike starkey when he said never ever miss the leadership opportunities in those masters things like president area director division director and things these these are all will gives you ultimate leadership skills not just the vice president or secretary and things like that the key leadership roles never miss an opportunity miss on taking those opportunities which gives you enormous amount of learning and that was the period where the elections were scheduled at our club i immediately nominated for president and and that stint as president in those masters also gave me a totally different exposure because as a president i use i have to welcome give a presidential address to the audience i cannot be cooking up the same story so i used to you know every meeting i used to bring some nice content which is relevant to that times or something which the audience can connect with better so like that i got this fantastic opportunity and after serving as president i was looking at what next i was still continuing in my you know giving my speeches and things like that and after a break of one year i went for the area director role that was when i have visited ishwar college a few times to organize contests and things like that and uh, that role again gave me an enormous amount of you know leadership exposure and uh, i got this title of distinguished toastmaster which is the highest for an individual in toastmaster you need to have completed an enormous amount of speech projects delivered a lot of leadership roles to get this title you know on an average when 100 people join toastmasters only around one or two go on to become distinguished toastmasters because others either they give up or they fizzle out or they, after 3 4 years in toastmasters they don't renew so this is a rough percentage or maybe this might be even less okay so getting the distinguished toastmaster title was a great achievement again during during my uh, work stint i came across a forum called yes which is young entrepreneur school we are talking about entrepreneurship and i have to talk about this fantastic forum i became a member of young entrepreneurship school in coimbatore this is a forum started by tamil nadu chamber chamber of commerce in madurai in 2004 starting in 2004 now they have around 25 chapters in different cities in tamil tamil nadu like in all the top cities you have chapters of yes and i was the core committee member in the second year again one of the leadership team member i got an enormous amount of exposure rubbing shoulders with a lot of entrepreneurs organizing events for entrepreneurs trainings programs and all those things and i used to handle a session they are called escape velocity the president told me later he select he hand picked me for this role because he knows i am a toastmaster and because you are a toastmaster i know you could be you know doing well in public speaking so this particular role of delivering escape velocity sessions needs good public speaking skills and when i took up that role every month in our meeting i used to deliver i have to deliver a topic on innovation what is some innovative practice that is happening across the globe or in our city or in our state or in the technological space where entrepreneurs can find something interesting and try to apply implement in their life i had to do a lot of research but in that journey i i happened to do an enormous amount of research and come out with some beautiful presentations deliver talks get feedbacks people used to appreciate people used to give me constructive feedbacks and all these things and i found this journey something totally rewarding the president was very supportive in giving me a free hand to do whatever i want i'm really grateful for few people to what i am today so yes this is a forum that gave me an enormous amount of clarity clarity and uh, epc export promotion center epc was start again started in 2010 in madurai by uh, tn chamber this is specifically focusing on the export either small time exporters or aspiring exporters join and i wanted to join because i i was having some uh, interest in exports so i used to have connect, be connected with some good companies 
which wanted to export products. So I used to do some consulting for them. So EPC was again a fantastic exp exposure. I used to attend events in uh, Kanatur, Madurai, Chennai. So I used to meet a uh, lot of successful exporters. The kind of insights I got from them was something amazing. So again, a forum which has given me a good exposure. Finally, coming to this forum called FAB, Friends and Business Forum. I might not have started Mantle if I had not become a FAB member. Because it is at FAB where I met all my partners at Mantle. Okay, I came across them at Mantle because all of them were, uh, sorry, at uh, FAB because all of them were entrepreneurs representing their business and joined FAB because in FAB, majority of the people are entrepreneurs or people who have some business ideas and want to soon get into that. Okay, so I met these three wonderful people and I was doing consulting services and representing uh, a company or a brand in FAB. But when I knew that all these people have got some passion in training, and they also you know, want to start something or do something in the training and development space, I shared my idea or proposal to them. See, it's it's been a dream for me to start a training company, but I can't do it alone. Somewhere, I, I, I don't feel I can do it alone. Can you be a part of the team? So one by one, I spoke to them. We all met together. During the pandemic, we had a couple of Zoom calls initially. And when things were favorable, you know, there was a small gap that we got between the first wave and second wave. So during that time, we met together at one of the office of uh, one of the partner. And uh, we had a physical discussion where we formalized everything. We will start a company that will focus on imparting training and development for corporates, entrepreneurs, professionals, and even students. And uh, these are the areas that we will be working on. So we go a good, a good amount of clarity. We took almost one month to arrive at a name of the company because we want an apt domain name because mantletraining.com is our domain. We are still not gone for the website. We are taking it a little slow. Our social media pages are quite active. We are very active in LinkedIn and uh, Twitter uh, because we feel to have a successful business, uh, you know, th uh, thriving. LinkedIn is an area where we should be really active. So our LinkedIn page is quite active and uh, it took a month's time for us to arrive at a company name. We had a lot of discussion, a lot of suggestions and uh, we even tried to coin some new words and all. And finally, eventually we arrived at Mantle as a name and Mantle Training and Consulting as a company name. After we started the logo, we took three months to arrive at the logo. And even now, we have still not launch the logo. I, this is the first time that I am putting it there for somebody to see it. We have just, uh, we, we want to you know, start launch the logo with some noise and sound. So we are just waiting. But today, you know, I thought for this event, it is fine to use that. And uh, we started Mantle. I met these people at, one moment. Yeah. I met these other three partners at FAB. We had total clarity in what we want to do how we want to do, which is the area that we want to focus on. And uh, we thought, okay, for me, it was like now or never. But still, there was I was getting some opportunities to again go abroad or, you know, do bigger consulting assignment for companies. But all those things, nothing is mine. I do consulting service for companies for somebody else, somebody else's company. I can't claim anything on my own. But now, as I told you, Mantle is my baby. No, I have two daughters. Now this is my, uh, you know, third, uh, yeah, kid or whatever it is. Uh, so that is the kind of passion that I drive mantle with. And it has given me an enormous amount of purpose. Like why I am in this space and what is it that I can do and how I can empower an enormous amount of professionals, entrepreneurs, corporates in, in imparting the right skills for their employees or, you know, for themselves. So that is my journey from scratch until today okay and i have a few other things just to share with you what i gained in in this uh, entire journey and how i can give you some tips on entrepreneurship probably i'll take another five ten minutes into just detail on these points so five steps before you start your entrepreneurship journey what are the things that you should be taking care of okay five steps you must take care before becoming an entrepreneur number one establish goals Okay, like how I met up with my 
prospective partners at that time. How have you met them? Told about the idea. What is it I wanted to do? In which area? How? Who are our target customers? How can we, you know, support them? Or how can we solve their problems or pain areas and things like that? We had total clarity in what we want to do. What is it that we want to do in the first one year or three years down the line? So we had clear goals. So if you are going to start some business, you should have established goals, total clarity in what you want to do. Think through your business. You know who are your potential customers? What is the challenge they have? What is it that you, as a company, can do different? Because competition is there in anything and everything that you do. You start something new, innovative today. Tomorrow there will be ten people trying to do the same thing. Okay, and things will be you know uh, aware instantly because in this tech savvy media, the things will spread fast. Okay, so something innovative that you do. How can you add value to the customer? What are what problems of the customer you are you know eliminating? Think through your business in various aspects. What is the solution? How it can benefit them and things like that. Okay, so all these things will definitely be very purposeful for you to have it in the initial stage and have an early client base. When we started, when we decided to start Mantle, we already spoke to some companies and try try to understand. Okay, uh, what kind of requirements they have? How can we deliver? Before even we launch the name of Mantle, like we started executing some programs because necessity was there. And they were you know, confident that we can go ahead and do that, and we started it. Okay, and uh, we started that. So we we knew who our clients are, clients are, and we had okay these people are our clients to start with. You can develop and diversify later, but to start with, you need to have a clarity. Talk to your loud and trusted ones because when you have a business idea. Try to validate this idea with a lot of people. Definitely, your loud and trusted ones will give you a lot of positive feedbacks only. But you should have people who can, who, who is like a devil's advocate, you know, who can def make you see in a different perspective. So try to validate this from everybody, not just people who say great idea, get started, everything will be great, successful. Try to validate this with people with different mindset, different perspectives. Okay. And you are the driver. This is not something which you are starting to run for a while and then stop it. Okay? You have to have an enormous amount of passion and energy because you are the driver. Your energy will directly, you know, trigger energy in the team, rest of the members. So you should have an enormous amount of energy to to take on a long journey. As I told you, it is not a destination; it is a long journey. Okay? And again. Once you start your entrepreneurship journey, what are the few things that you you should be really focusing on? Profile of an entrepreneur in the present scenario, when it is very important for you to have a digital presence. Okay, your profile is very important. How do you build your profile? How do you you know make people know about your company, the the people, the founding team, the core team, and things like that? It is very very important. How do you build it? You should have a you know very successful social media presence also. It is highly important. And how do you have influencers? How they can we can get them to talk about your company, talk about your brand, talk about your services? It is very very important. Okay. So build your profile very carefully because the post that we do in social media it will go viral. So few things if it is inappropriate initially, you know it it might not be in sync later. So create it in a very meticulous manner. Choosing the core team is very important. Okay, I could have started this company with anybody of my choice. I didn't want to go with my best friends or you know like I didn't. I was not uh, what to say taken carried away by some aura or something of people. I was looking at each person how they can add value. I told you finance is my weak area. So Mr. Shini Vasan, he can definitely support me in finance. Is what I strongly believe. Uh, the person who was with NIIT and NIS. she has also got a good finance background and uh, she she can also add enormous value to the team and the person with three decades of experience in the pharma industry he is very good in people management hr and things like that okay so the four of us we have distributed roles among ourselves i'll be in charge of the marketing okay the second person will be in charge of the uh, complete operations part the person who was with the iit the finance and management consultant he'll take over the complete finance 
and the person with the uh, experience in the pharma industry, three decades of experience, he'll take over the complete HR. Okay, and he's the one who's managing our uh, social media pages also. So among the four of us, we didn't want to have any clash. Marketing, everybody combined, or uh, operations, everybody combined. We wanted to have a role clarity, and the core team, uh, once we got set, everybody has got freedom to decide, to take decisions. Okay, so the core team is very, very important. Don't go by sentiments and emotions. It is very, very important. There are a lot of companies, you know, the core team, uh, later, you know, some people drop out and new people come. You know, it, you should be very clear on what how each person of the core team can add value to your team and getting good people and retaining them. You know, when you're a startup, you know, when you're a new company, you should have the right people, with the right skill set and you should know to retain them also because people think startup, okay, they might not be able to pay well or initially, okay, for a year or so I can and then I can look at something else. But, the, you know, each person, you should take people by their strength and you see, you should have a clear roadmap for them on how you can retain them, how they can grow in a startup. This is something which you should be clear of. And processes are very, very important. You know, not that, okay, we are just three people, right? We just started, right? We are just new. We can get the processes later. No, have clear process right from day one. Only then, you know, anybody who joins the company later will understand that, you know, this company is a process-driven organization. You know, that, that is, I cannot take things lightly. And it will be easy for you to do a lot of, you know, uh, the research, analysis, things like that, once you have a clear process in place. A company is known by the customers it, it keeps. I told you, right, you should you should have, who, you know, in the early slide I told you, have an early client, client base. Once you start, how can you have a healthy, prestigious customers in place? It is very, very important. Okay, since you are new, not, not everybody, you know, every uh, big customers might want to uh, engage you for their services. But still there are ways and means how you can have them as your customers. You should always have a wish list in Coimbatore if you, you know, if you are having a company in any domain. You should have a wish list of, you know, okay, if I have this kind of a company, if you are into construction, okay, you are focusing on companies into construction. That is Precall Property, that is Daksha. You know, there is a lot of companies like who are doing big time projects in construction. These kind of companies would be great if you can get to work with. Try to get some small orders from them, you know, which gives you an opportunity to work with them. Don't look at getting good profit, good margin and things like that. Your intention is to get them as your client so that you can showcase as, as your client. Don't look for huge profits and all. An opportunity to work with them. If me, as a training company, I would try to work with, you know, some colleges that gives me a good impact, good mileage. So I would try to work with them, get some good testimonials and use them to get other good customers. Okay? So a company is known by the customer it keeps. Always try to work with people who respect you, people who value your service. Okay? So always have a wish list, what kind of customers I want and have different strategy for different customers. One uh, strategy might not fit for all. You know, have different strategies and you should see how you can get that company as a customer giving them some service that's a value add. Willingness to, willingness to change or adapt to the changing trends. We are going through a, an enormous change in the last one and a half years. Okay, if somebody had told me, I'll be sitting like this and delivering an online session to uh, you know 500 audience, I would have laughed at them. I thought it is impossible, it is practically not possible at all. It is a reality now. Today, you know, at, at my home, my wife, she is taking classes for uh, you know, 10th standard students in the school. My elder daughter, who is in 5th standard, she is attending online class. My youngest daughter, who is just 3 and a half years old, she is attending her LKG session online from home. Could you, do you think it is, it, it would have been considered even possible 2 years before, 1 and a half years before? Never ever. But it is a reality that we have to change. Look at the kind of change that the companies are trying to adapt. Our home is not just a home. It is home, it is office, it is uh, it is a gym, it is a playground, it is an entertainment area, you know, what not. So your home has to be ready with all these things. How companies are tempting the customers, providing you know, a lot of different things at home. How Netflix, Amazon Prime and everything are thriving. 
people who never had membership are having now okay so you as a company as an entrepreneur as a startup should have should be able to understand the changing scenario the market scenario and try to adapt and change and give services and products that is in line with the current requirement okay next is always keep yourself updated and seize every opportunity there are a lot of changes that keeps happening in engineering trust me friends you know when you started your engineering in your domain there might be something which is most happening by the time you know you finish in 3 4 years time there would be, that might have been outdated and there would, there would have been new things that has come okay so how we are staying updated is very very important otherwise we might be left behind there are a lot of companies which crashed which is not to be seen in the you know in the business fraternity at all because they didn't keep themselves updated nokia is a good example when the you know, touch phone revolution started nokia was not taking it seriously perished from the market at that time like that lot of companies okay so you need to be really updated and get your product and services you know to that changing trends last one collaboration you more you would have seen a lot of companies which are bitter rivals suddenly merging you know acquisition collaborating it is happening look at elite partners earlier idea and word of one they were such bitter rivals one fine day merge there are a lot of companies that happens like that services companies same target segment but different products they try to collaborate okay a company in bangalore a company in coimbatore okay their focus is on same target segment but different service if they collaborate instantly the company in coimbatore is getting 100 customers in bangalore the company in bangalore is getting 100 customers in coimbatore how can you have some strategic partners to scale up very much possible if your eyes if you keep your eyes wide open to seek the right update or strategy that you can associate with okay so if once you start your entrepreneurship journey these are few factors which i feel from my experience and from what i have whatever i have been witnessing are very relevant to how you can focus on to stay updated to form form alliance and take your company to something which is always into continuous innovation okay so i hope these tips made some sense and you can get some uh, insights from it if you want to start entrepreneurship any time is a is a right time okay have confidence have convictions take a leap of faith jump into it definitely you can excel enormously because the world needs a lot of entrepreneurs okay so thank you so much for this opportunity i truly appreciate your patience since this was totally one way i would now look at addressing some questions from you which i can try to support and uh, clear your doubts and respond to your questions i'm just going to stop presentation one minute this is new to me i'm just yeah, yeah i i'm done from my side thank you so much for the patient listening i had it over back to the uh, mc to try and navigate i don't know if there are any questions that has already been asked if there is something that has been already shared in the chat if you can just pick it up and maybe share it i'll try to uh, get my response to it any feedbacks are welcome any suggestions suggestions are welcome because you came here expecting something but you want to, what you got was different we can put it in chat definitely i i will try to see if i can incorporate it in any of the talk that i give later okay sudarshan i am sudarshan from second ai ds department i would like to ask i have a great idea that has no competition how can i protect it so others don't steal my idea see this is a thought that every you know aspiring entrepreneur has got but mark my words if a product or something new is not worth copying then it is not a great idea okay so have that conviction try to get the right mentors right people who can guide you try to you know validate your idea from them and uh, do all the ground work and launch it with all kind of confidence and if there is some you know patent or some copyright or something for it you can go for it but you don't have to fear how you can you know package it with 
as much innovative uh, features or you know services as possible that should be a lookout don't fear of you know somebody replicating that idea initial phase you will definitely have okay until you launch it probably you can try to you know keep it a little confidential but try to connect with the right people right mentors with whom you can openly share because they can bring a lot of their experience and and help you to to validate that idea better okay so uh, any you know technology entrepreneur will have this doubt so sudarshan probably you can get my number from uh, the faculties and you can connect me one to one uh, there are few things you know which i need time to explain considering time this is what i have to share to you at this moment so don't fear of that have the right people who can guide you and launch it at the earliest okay so this is my uh, tip to you i am vidyan from second okay i would like to know what is your favorite aspect of being an entrepreneur okay uh today an opportunity like this to address to 500 plus audience that itself gives me an enormous amount of motivation and being there to provide solutions okay the kind of testimonials and feedback i get from my customers is what gives me an enormous amount of excitement because i we, we don't have a set uh deliverables for our clients to each client we try to understand we try to have a total uh, analysis try to clearly understand what is it they are expecting how we can tailor make the deliverables to meet their requirement and then we go ahead and do that it is only by that we are able to create the outcome that they are expecting okay so the satisfaction in in delivering such projects such programs and seeing that a, a, a happy client a satisfied client that is what uh, vidya gives me an enormous amount of satisfaction or something which i which i feel is a great thing about being an entrepreneur guru prasad from csc the beginning of the journey okay see uh, i told you i i have still not got my website vendor okay we are now into the fourth month lot of people ask me what is your website I, I, because I, I i saw a lot of demo i saw a lot of presentation a lot of people send me proposals but still i, I have not been able to identify okay this is what i want maybe my ignorance and uh, understanding uh, what is uh, you know how to select a great website vendor okay because i am not a technical guy and none of our my partners are also into the technical background okay so that these are few the you know getting into that Uh, this taking decisions in the technical side a few of us gave us proposals for lms learning management system okay we as a company we want to have that but out of the demos that we saw we aren't really sure okay so these kind of things are a handicap for me so if you have try to have somebody in, in your team who can who can uh, balance that uh, vacuum that you have i think that should be good in our team if you see nobody is technically competent or tech savvy so this is a challenge that i have but you know uh, in fab itself the forum that i told there are few people who are into it uh, pro without expecting any business or without expecting any monetary gain they will give me some good consulting so i have some good connects who are helping me in my journey abhishek what inspired you to develop your area uh abhishek if you can be more specific to develop your area in the means my uh okay i i just share what comes to my mind if there is something more specific you can put it in chat and then i will try to share uh see i told you that spark of getting into the training and development industry came only through my participation in landmark training that uh, confidence that i had at that moment going and shouting in front of 750 people on the mic i'm rakesh i'm so and so until now okay 16 years i have been 16 17 years i have been in this domain i have got that courage and confidence to take my career in, in the training and development industry and i'm going to do that you know that that was the spark that i got and i pursued that a discussion that i had with a career coach in bangalore which okay i i went and announced it but then still with fear in my mind how am i going to do that was there this coach who i met in bangalore with whom i had a one to one session at a coffee shop one hour talk that made me believe that i have the skills and i can take it on 
Okay, so these are two things that I uh, that I am able to recall now, and my association with the company key mind that young CEO who's my great inspiration for public speaking. Okay, I, I always I think his name is Anmol Vich. Uh, definitely, he is quite known to the founders of the institute. Anmol was a student entrepreneur. When he was a student in college itself, he started some uh, organization. He launched it. He was he had a good PR at that time. So my inspiration in terms of becoming an entrepreneur, being good public speaker, I, I can't claim if I can become a good motivational speaker because I try to motivate, but I don't know how many are motivated. Okay. So he's been a great inspiration for me, and I have had people, the founder of Fab Business Forum, the founder of Yes M Entrepreneurship, Mr. Nidhi Mohan, who is running a thousand crore company. Okay, he's a, one of the biggest exporter in India. Uh, I have got the opportunity to spend time with Mr. Nidhi Mohan. Spend time with the founder of Fab, Mr. Sunil Krishna, who is a Six Sigma consultant. The credentials that they had, that they, you know, they generously shared their experience with me. So having the right people to guide you is very, very important. So this is it from my side, Abhishek. Any one of you, please feel free to connect with me in any way that you want, like maybe a call or a uh, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook. Twitter, I'm not very active. LinkedIn, okay, you can connect with me, and I can definitely share my experience with you. Uh, hello, uh, Rakesh. Yes, yes ma'am. There are a lot of other questions. Yes, there are a yeah. lot of other questions actually. Yeah. Uh, so, like uh, maybe from our side, we can consolidate the questions and uh, um, we we can you, you and one thing which I'm just wanting to offer, ma'am, you can consolidate all these uh, questions. We can have a session only for Q and A. Maybe later, sometime later. Right. Maybe yeah, yeah, next week, next month, because for me, I love to spend time with students. And uh, if I can add some value, if I can create some spark in their minds, I'll be happy. So you can compile from my side. I don't know how can I save chat. You can do that. And uh, maybe those audience, you can try to bring it. You can create an opportunity, ma'am. This need not end here. That is my uh, uh, thoughts. Yeah, def definitely. So from our side, uh, we we will consolidate the questions and um, like we will also arrange one more Q and A session exclusively. Uh, I mean, exclusive Q and A session. And uh, yeah. these questions also we will share with you. Okay, fine, ma'am. Fine, ma'am. So you can also know like what students what students have there in their mind regarding entrepreneurship. The basic the, queries that normally people have regarding definitely, entrepreneurship. Definitely, ma'am. Ma and uh, today I know they might have you know other sessions. Considering yeah. all those things, you can take a call and you can wrap. I hand it over back to the MC and uh, thank you so much uh, to the uh, management uh, faculties of uh, Sri Ishwar College of Engineering for giving me this opportunity. I truly uh, loved interacting with the students and uh, that could probably be a Zoom session where they can come online and they can talk so that I can also see them and respond. It, you know, it would, uh, an interaction also is definitely possible. Yeah, I truly appreciate each and every person who joined here, the participants, students, your energy, your enthusiasm, and I hope I could add some value to the time that you spent here. If I get another opportunity, I would definitely try to share my knowledge, and if it helps, I'll be glad. Thank you so much. Back to the MCs. Thank you, sir. It was an informative session. Showing gratitude is one of the powerful things humans can do for each other. To extend the sincere and profound, let me call upon Ms. Sumaya Parvain, Assistant Professor CSE, to propose the vote of thanks. <laughs>